meanwhile, I'd been up at the AI lab, and I met uh, the people up there, got to know like Leland Smith, uh, who, uh, uh, who, was the, who was a great mu musician, a professor. And Leland Smith told me about a problem that he had. He was typesetting music. Uh, and he, he says, I've got these, I, I got a piece of music, and, and it's got, uh, uh, you know, it, it may, maybe has 50 bars of music. I have to decide when to, when to turn the page. Um, and I know how many, how many notes are in each bar of the music, and I know, uh, uh, you know, how much can fit on a page, and, but I'd like to have the, have, have the breaks come out right. Can, uh, uh, is there any, you know, are there any algorithms that, that could, 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 could work for this? And he, he described the problem with me as you have a sequence of numbers of how many notes there are and try to find a, a way to break it into, in, in, into uh, uh, lines and, and, and pages in a decent way. And so I looked at the problem. I said, "Hey, Leland, this is this is great. Uh, it's a nice uh, application of something we, in computer science, call the dynamic programming algorithm method. And and uh, look, here's how dynamic programming can be used to solve this problem. And then I I'm teaching uh, uh, Stanford's problem seminar the next the next fall. And uh, I gave that uh, it came up in 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 class where I would show the students." Look how this we had this music problem, and we can solve it with dynamic program. Um, and uh, <clears throat> one of the students, I I don't remember who it was, uh, raised his hand and said, "You know, you you could also use that to to text to English to to, uh, to printing books. You could you could say instead of n notes uh, 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 into bars, uh, you could also say uh, letters in, 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 you know, and words into into lines and, and make paragraphs." Um, uh, choosing good line breaks that way, and I and I said, "Hey, that's cool. You, you know, you're right." Um, okay. Now, um, <clears throat> then comes in the mail the proof sheets for Volume Two, uh, the second, the second edition of Volume Two, uh, um, which is now going out for 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 its uh, you know second second. Uh, I mean, I I had changed a lot of pages in Volume Two of Art of Computer Programming. And uh, so I got uh, page proofs for the new edition. Um, <clears throat> during the 70s, the printing technology changed drastically. It was hot. It was done with printing was done with hot lead in the 60s, but they switched over to work, to using film in the 70s. Um, and uh, the so the, my whole book had been completely retypeset with a different technology, and the new fonts looked terrible. The, the the subscripts were in a different style from the the, the large letters, for example, and and the and the uh, spacing was very bad. And, and you, know, you, you can look at books printed in the early 70s, and and it turns out that if it wasn't a if it wasn't a, a simple, it, it, well, almost everything looked looked atrocious in in, in those days, um, and uh, I couldn't stand to see my books. Uh, uh, so ugly. Pat Winston had just come out with a new book on artificial intelligence, that and and the and the proofs of it were were just being done at uh, at Triple I Corporation in Southern California, one of Ed Fredkin's company. Um, they had a a new way of typesetting using lasers, and 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 uh, all digital, all uh, all dots of ink instead of instead of instead of photographic. Uh, uh, I images and lenses. They were using uh, bits. Al algorithms, bits, uh, through it. And I looked at these uh, galley proofs of, of, uh, of Winston's book, and they, and I, 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 I knew it was just bits, but they looked gorgeous. They looked absolutely as good as anything I'd ever seen printed by any method. I, I canceled my 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 uh, sabbatical. Plan for for Chile. I wrote to them saying, "I'm sorry. We, you know, uh, I, I I just decided to change. To, instead of working on Volume Four during my sabbatical, I'm going to, um, I, I'm I'm going to work on typography. Uh, I, I just can't. You know, I, 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 I I've got to solve this problem of, of of getting typesetting right, and and it's only zeros and ones. I can get those. I can get those dots on the page, uh, and and so I'm got, I've got to write this program. I did want to." sink my teeth into something other than a toy problem. And, and it wasn't real large, but it wasn't real small either. Um, so it's true that, that, I, that I probably had this, 
had this craving, but I, but I have a, had a stronger craving to finish Volume Four, um, and I, I did, I did sincerely believe that it was only going to take me a year to well, do. Maybe. And so for me, the combinatorial explosion was the explosion of research. The, the, yeah. the, not the problems exploding, but the ideas were exploding, and, and so there was that much more to cover. So it, it, it's true that I also, in the back of my mind, I'm scared stiff that I can't write volume four anymore. Um, and so maybe I'm waiting for it to, to, uh, to simmer down. I mean, somebody did say to me once, um, after I solved the problem of typesetting, maybe I would you know, start to look at binding or something, because I, you know, I had to have something else to, to you know, some other reason. I've certainly seen enough graduate student procrastinators in my life. Um, that, uh, so maybe, maybe I, was, uh, I was in denial 